So here we are looking at an autocorrelation question. We're considering uh, having estimated a regression model. Let's actually just uh, state that regression model. Yt is a function of a constant slope coefficient times xt plus ut. Okay, so that's what we described here in the text, an explanatory variable with one uh, in the in our regression model. We also have 193 observations and now there are four auxiliary regressions available and we want to perform a test for autocorrelation. But we only need to use one. We'll, we need to figure out which one's the correct one. The first two have as a dependent variable ut hat squared, which are proxies for the error variance. So we are not really interested in that. We are not wanting to test for heteroscedasticity. That's when we would be looking at these. We are interested in the autocorrelation. So C and D are relevant. What's the difference between C and D? D. Both of them have these two lags. The difference is whether it includes the explanatory variable from the original regression. And whenever you run an auxiliary regression, regression with ut hat, the estimated residuals, you have to include the explanatory variable as well, although you know that it will be uncorrelated to the ut hat. So therefore, our null hypothesis is going to be that delta 1 and delta 2 are equal to 0. And if that was the case, there would be no autocorrelation. If, however, either delta 1 and or delta 2 are unequal to 0, then we would have an issue of autocorrelation. So these deltas, they of course describe whether the ut hat is correlated with the ut minus 1 hat and or the ut minus 2 hat. The test statistic we're going to use to test this hypothesis is what we call the LM test. And that is t, and that is the sample size of the auxiliary regression. So I shall just put a little aux subscript here, times the r squared from the auxiliary regression. So let's consider what that t aux is, the sample size size in the auxiliary regression. In our regression model we had 193 observations. In the auxiliary regression we have 193 minus 2 because we are using a lag of 2 and we are therefore losing two observations. So 191 times r squared, that's going to be our test statistic. Let's think about the decision rule. It's a chi-squared type test, and that's always a right tail test, so we will reject H0 if the test statistic is larger than the critical value. And it will become large enough if we get high enough r squareds. So let's just, square, uh, let's just sketch a chi-squared distribution. We have a critical value here on the right-hand side. That's the value that cuts off 5% of the distribution. And if the test statistic comes into the right of that value, we shall reject the null hypothesis. So that R squared from our auxiliary regression is 0.15. So the value of our test statistic is going to be 28.65. So is that larger or smaller than the critical value? We need to find the critical value from a table, from a textbook, or other published source for the chi-square table. We have two degrees of freedom. We are testing two restrictions. And the correct critical value is 5.991. So... Since our test statistic is clearly larger than that, we shall reject the null hypothesis and obviously autocorrelation is an issue. So if that is the case, what type of standard error will we have to use if we want to perform inference on a regression coefficient? So the type of coefficient we're looking at is, for instance, this alpha 1 up here in our regression model. So a t-test would be alpha 1 hat minus alpha 1 from the null hypothesis divided by a standard error for alpha hat 1. But we would have to use a new West standard error once we know that there's autocorrelation. And asymptotically, then the t-test will be standard normally distributed. With a sample size of 193, we are possibly good.